more maths topic by topic. And today we're going to have a look at those awful things that people hate. We're going to look at percentages. They're not particularly nice, no one really likes them, but they're used in not just maths, but it's used in all types of business. Everywhere we go, we meet percentages, so we need to be really good at using them. Let's have a look. Now, where did this idea of percentages come around from? Well, no one really knows where this sort of particular symbol, this percentage, came from. But what we do know is it's been around for an awful long time. Right. So, some sort of form is we've seen it written as perhaps that sort of maybe per percento the exact origin really is obscure but it's been around since I don't know about 1425 and there's a lot of sort of stuff about percentages that we need to know so let's just start off with the easy bit we often have something like a uh, basically a fraction. Let's have here something like three-eighths. Now, if I want to, I can divide three here, divided by eight, and that's going to give us 0 0.375. Okay, so we've got our percent, our fraction into a decimal. And then, to turn it into a percentage, we multiply by 100, which gives us here 37.5%. And without the percentage, it's not a percentage. So, to turn anything into a percentage, let's have something like 24 out of... 40, then we multiply simply by 100 to turn that to a percentage. Let's just divide by that, and then 4s into 4 go 1, 4s into 24 go 6, 6 times 10 gives us 60%. So we've got lots of different sort of ways, if you like, of making percentages, but basically they come down to simply multiplying something by 100. So we can find a fraction of an amount. And let's have a go at a couple of these. I've got one-fifth. I want it as a decimal, and I want it as simply a, fra uh, a, de a percentage. So this is going to be 1 divided by 5. We could do this manually or it's quite easy as well to do this on the calculator. And just to do this one on the calculator for a change then we simply do here 1 over 5 my calculator is very helpful. It will tell me that's a fifth. If we change from a third to a decimal, it will give me 0 0.2. And to change it to a percentage, we will simply multiply that by 100. And we put our percentage sign in. They're not really that difficult. We could also change it round. I've got 14%. Can I write that as a decimal? Can I write that as a fraction? 
well to turn this into a decimal we would now divide by 100 to turn it into a fraction then simply I will take my 14 over 100 that will cancel down twos that will give me seven fiftieths so we can make a series of different sort of conversions between percentages and decimals and we can change it to do other things let's have a look at a problem with VAT VAT was a few years ago much more difficult than it is today VAT I remember being awkwardly 17.5% now VAT is 20% so much easier to work out so let's suppose we buy a t-shirt If I want a t-shirt, then let's suppose my t-shirt costs £12 and we have a, a £12 plus VAT. Several choices about how we go and sort this out. We could work out what 20% of 12 is. So that would be to work out, first of all I've got £12, I want to find out what 1% is, so that involves dividing by 100 and then multiplying by 20. Let's do some cancelling. Now, let's try seeing what we can do here we can now take 12 we're going to divide by 10 and that's going to give me 1.2 1.2 times 2 is going to give me two pound 40. i now add that on to what we've got And there's our answer. Is there an easier way? Yeah, there can be. We can take 12. We can multiply it by not just to sort of add on the 20%. But I want to add on the 20% to the 12. So I can multiply it by a multiply factor of here 1.2 zero I don't need the zero and that's going to give me again exactly the same answer but this time I've done it in one go 12 times 1.2 so we have this as a multiply factor now where have I got that from well simply we've got my 12 pound and I'm multiplying that by 120% and dividing by 100. Divide these by 100 and we get my 12 times 1.2. Makes more sense if we try one of these out. So let's try another one of these out. So let's suppose I want to buy... Tennis isn't on this year, so let's have a tennis racket. Tennis racket's going to cost me £49. And I want to work out what VAT is. So this one, let's just multiply by 1.2. It's probably 
the easiest way of doing it. So, let's just take my 49 and multiply by 1.2. And there is our answer. £58 and 80p. So these aren't particularly difficult as long as you remember we've got to do the same basic sort of instructions every time and then it's not particularly difficult. Where percentage become difficult is we start to do some more nasty things with them. So let's go and have a look at some of these. Maybe we want to have some sort of percentage increase on something. So we've had a go at trying to do some of those, but let's do the percentage discount. And that's where I've got an item, let's say a TV, is going to cost at the moment £320. In a sale we're going to advertise it's 15% off mark price. So let's have a look and see how we have a go about this. Well what I'm actually looking for is 15% off. So if this £320 equals 100%, I want to get 15% off of that, which is going to give me 85%. So we now want to find what 85% of 320 is. How would I do that? Let's take my 320, I divide by 100 to find what 1% is, and then I multiply by 85. In the same way, I could take my 320, and I could multiply it by my multiply factor. 85 over 100 is 0.85. It doesn't matter which one you want to do, they give you the same answer. And so if we just pop over to the calculator, then simply this is 320 times the easiest one, 0.85. And it gives me my answer, which is 272 pounds. Right, now let's see if we could work out some other things. So percentage discounts where we're losing our money, we simply work out if it's so much off, we take that away from 100. Let's do a different example. So I bought myself a bike and my bike cost say 230 pound and it's fallen by let's have something easy it's gone down by 20 percent so i want to find out what it's going to be worth now 20% off means it's now worth only 80% of its former value. So what we can do is we can have a look at this. So it's going to be £230 times either 80 and divide by 100 or perhaps it's easier to do 230 times 0 0.8 
and that on the calculator is really easy to do. But let's do the other one. So we've got my 230. I'm going to divide it by 100 and then I'm going to multiply that answer by 80. And that gives me my price of 184. For those of you who don't believe me, then we could just as easily have done 230 times 0.8 and we get exactly the same answer because that's what we're trying to do with the sum. So percentage discounts not really as bad as they seem. Of course we can have a few problems with some of these and we can try and work out what these values were. So let's look at one of these nasty particular problems and one of these problems might be that we've got something like um, I know let's go for a skirt or something like that a skirt is let's say 37 pounds in the sale and it's marked here as being I know let's have 35 percent off so that is its price at being 35 percent off so what we've got to try and do now is work out what was its original price okay so let's have a go at trying to work out how we might go about this one now this one is a little bit more complicated to try and work out because we know what its price is if it's now 35 percent off then what was it so we know we want to find its 100 percent price we don't know what that is and when it was here at 37 pounds that's 35 percent off of that so this means it's now 65 percent of its former value And that takes a bit of thinking about that if it's 35% off, it's 35% off its original price. So it's 65% of its value. Let's take this 65 and see what we can do with it. So let's find out what 1% is. So this is 65. I want to find out what 1% is. So I will divide by 65 and then I'll multiply by 100. Let's put this into the calculator and find out what happens. So we've got my 37 divided by 65 and then we're going to multiply that by 100. We're going to use our third to decimal and we can see that it's now going to be before the sales it was going to be 56 pounds and 92p there we are a different way of trying to work out one of these sort of percentage differences how they've actually changed let's look at another type of problem let's suppose I read that a box of cereal and in this box of cereal we're told that 12% is 
sugar and I have a box that contains 750 grams and I want to know really how much sugar is in there well this is a very easy one because we've just really got to find out what 12% of 750 is so I take my 750 I want to find out what 1% is we divide by 100 and then we multiply by 12 that will cancel that's going to be now 7.5 times 12 and 7.5 times 12 let's use the calculator gives me here 90 grams so let's have a look at perhaps a different one okay so let's suppose we buy a bike again I like bikes there not too bad to play around with. I've got a bike and let's suppose my bike costs let's make it nice easy figure 500 pound. Unfortunately that is plus VAT so we've got to work out what that's going to be. It will just say VAT you need to know what VAT is. £500 here, we're going to multiply here by 120 because I want to add it on and divide by 100. We're going to find, divide by 100, find out what 1% is and then multiply by 120 to find that. Let's just do some cancelling. And that's going to give me 5 times 120, you can probably do that one in your head, so we've got 5 times 120, gives me a nice round £600 is what the bike cost. Now this bike then we find loses 15% of its value per year and let's work out what that's going to be so we've got my price 600 pounds we've got to lose 15 percent of its value if we're losing 15 percent of its value it's now worth 85% so we're going to divide by 100 and multiply by 85 I can cancel to make my life a little bit easier so this is now going to be 6 times 85 which will give me the answer just by putting 6 times 85 into the calculator of £510 Now, this bike might lose more value the next year, and it loses 25% of its value in the second year. So we repeat this type of sum, but this time we take our 510. We would divide by 100 to find out what 1% is, and then we multiply by 100 minus 25, which is 75 because it's only going to be worth 75% of its value I can cancel divide by 10 it's going to give me 5.1 times 75 and let's put that one into the calculator and that's going to give me 
£382.50. One of the questions that sometimes comes up is something about adding a percentage and then removing a percentage. So let's suppose I have a sum and let's choose something easy like £150. And if I increase it here, multiply it if you like by 10%, and then I decrease by 10%, will I get the same answer? Let's do it and see. 150, I want to get, find out what 110% is. So we're going to put in a multiply factor of 1.1. That's the same as writing 150, divide it by 100 and multiply by 110, which is the ordinary amount, 100% plus the 10%. Let's just try this one. 1.5 times here. That was a mistake, wasn't it? Let's do that again. 150, I wasn't looking, times... 1.1 and that gives me 165 now I've got 165 I want to work out what I'm going to take off 10% of this is to find out what 10% is, let's divide by 100 and multiply by 10. And that's going to give me here 16.5. So this is the amount I would want to take away from my 165. And if I take my 165 and I take away my 16.5, and I'm doing this the very long way to show you, I've got my 165, I'm just going to leave that as my answer, and I'm going to take away 16.5. And if the sum were correct, I'd end up with 150. But we don't. We end up with here 148.5 so here increasing by 10% and then decreasing by the same amount 10% here does not give us the same answer so we have to be careful with this sort of percentage and it's a favourite question that people want to try and do. We also get nice ones with pay rises. I want a pay rise. We all do. And let's suppose I earn, let's say, £50 per hour. It's a lovely sum, nice round sum. And I'm going to get a 2% pay rise. Try and keep up with inflation. Now, to do 2% here, I want to find out here, I've got my £50. I'm going to divide by 100 to find out what 1% is. And then I'm going to multiply by... 102. I could write that as a multiply factor. 50 times here 1.02. And if we work one of these things out, 
there's my 50 times 1.02 and it says now that I will earn 51 pounds per hour so that's giving me a short and small pay rise The real fun with some of these come when we come to compound interest. Let's suppose, and this is going to be very fictitious, that I am going to have in the bank something like 3% interest. If only it were that much these days. But we'll try something here. Now, let's take my sum, and I've got £5,000, and I'm going to invest this at 3% for five years. So I'm going to lock my money away. There's two ways of trying to do this. Firstly, I can take my amount... I can work out what 3% is, and then I can do it again, and again, and again, and again. Or we can use a formula. And this formula, we take the principal, the amount here that we've got, and we're going to multiply this by the multiply factor, which is going to be 1 plus whatever this percentage is as a decimal so it's going to be my 3 divided by 100 to the power of the number of years we're going to go for and this is 5 years so this becomes my 5000 times 1.03 to the power of 5. Definitely need a calculator for this one. So let's put in my principal, 5,000, times my multiply factor, 1.03 to the power of 5. And it comes up and tells me my net worth is now £5,796.37p. We could have got exactly the same result by doing this sum several times. Let's do that. 5,000 here times 1.03 and let's try and do this so we've got my sum 5,000 times 1.03 and that gives me an answer of 51 now we take my 5150, we multiply it by 1.03 and we get what we're worth in the second year. And here we've got 53. 0.4.5 now we're going to take 5304.5 and we're going to multiply it by again 1.03 to find out what we're going to be in the third year and that gives me 5463.5 Six three. I'm going to leave the five in here because it's going to help. 
0.5463.63.5 I only round when I get to the end of my sum so we're going to take this let's multiply this by 1.03 and we get here 5627.54405 and I'm going to take that number 5627 blah 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 times 1.03 I'm not just going to write it all out but we'll go back to the calculator here times by 1.03 and we get 579637 which just happens to be the same answer that we had before so it doesn't matter whether you do it the long way or the short way but the short way is usually a little bit easier trying to do this so we can compare here doing things this is called compound interest sometimes they'll meet simple interest where you would actually just repeat this so if I did this at simple interest different way of doing it that's going to be 5,000 times 1.03 that's going to be what we're going to do we're just going to multiply this time to work out what the interest is and if I do this to work out the interest, it's going to be 150. I did that by cheating, looking at the sum above. So, I would then multiply that by 5 to get my value. And if we multiply 150 by 5, we're going to get 750. If I add my 750 on there, I would get 5,750 if we used simple interest. Because we'd always be working on the same total and adding the same amount on each time. Compound interest, we're going back and taking the result and we're adding that on each time. So we're gradually getting more and more money. This is the method that banks use, which is probably just as well because we can get a better sort of result from this. So we've had a look quickly at percentage increase, percentage decrease. We've had a look at compound interest. We've had a look at simple interest to try and give you an idea about how we do some of these things. I hope that's given you some better idea on percentages. They're not particularly difficult. The hardest bit is the fact that you don't practice them and you forget how to do them. So I hope you found that helpful. If you found it useful then please remember to subscribe and I will see you same time next week to do some more GCSE Maths topic by topic. Bye-bye.